let me start with uh, the cooperation of uh, Russia, you know, the United States, and other countries in those conflict solutions. It will clearly indicate our approach towards problems in the uh, CIS uh, countries, uh, what uh, we do call uh, near abroad, but uh, it's uh, not that uh, we are, uh, when we use uh, this term, uh, and uh, mostly it's a term used uh, by uh, the journalists, it's not uh, the official uh, one. So we have a very good uh, experience of cooperation between our two countries in solving uh, different problems. Maybe the best example is how Russia, the United States and France work on finding uh, the solution for the Nagorno-Karabakh uh, conflict between Armenia and Azerbaijan. Our three countries are uh, the co-chairs of the so-called OEC Minsk Group, which uh, works uh, really hard to uh, find a diplomatic uh, solution <coughs> to this 20 years old uh, conflict. We work together with uh, the European Union, the United States, the OEC and the Ukrainians on finding a solution to the Transnistria conflict. And uh, we also had an experience of working wi uh, within uh, the framework of the uh, Secretary Uni United Nations uh, Secretary General Friends of Georgia group on uh, the settlement in Abkhazia and also on, uh, fi uh, together with the OSC on finding the solution, the peaceful solution to the conflict in South Ossetia. Regretfully, the Georgian leadership chose another way. Instead of finding the diplomatic solutions, they wanted, uh, they tried in August uh, last year to find a military solution. And uh, besides uh, aggression against uh, South uh, Ossetia, and uh, uh, I'd like to argue with Mr. Uh, Gobble, the Georgians, uh, the Georgian army attacked the Russian peacekeepers and in any case uh, in the world, an attack in its, on its armed forces constitutes an attack, an aggression against the country itself. I guess uh, you can uh, remember, uh, for, for example, uh, when uh, the disc attack uh, Labelle in uh, Berlin was bombed in 1986. And uh, American uh, servicemen uh, died. So uh, the uh, American government decided that the Libyans are uh, to blame. Uh, I'm not going uh, to discuss now whether uh, the proof uh, for uh, this uh, version was sound or not, but still it was uh, considered that the Libyans were uh, guilty of this uh, label uh, attack. And President Reagan authorized an airstrike against uh, Tripoli in 1986. And uh, in this uh, case, in, the, in South Ossetia, the attack on Russian peacekeepers was uh, uh, at least more proven. So, it constituted an attack against Russian forces as well. 
But when talking about what Russia is uh, today, what Russia was uh, 20 years ago and what Russia is today, let's ask ourselves, is it a more predictable international partner? Is it a more predictable and better business partner? Do we have uh, in uh, Russia a country more open to the world? And the answer to all those questions will be yes. Well, the leading international uh, companies, including America, American, like uh, are uh, seeking new opportunities and finding new opportunities in having business relations with Russia. Well, the best example of uh, American companies uh, having business relations with Russian is uh, Boeing uh, and uh, the Russian company Avis, VSMPO Avisma, uh, the leading producer of the titanium uh, alloys, uh, which are used uh, for uh, producing uh, the Boeing <coughs> aircrafts, uh, including the uh, Dreamliner. And as, uh, and, uh, as for an international uh, partner uh, capable of uh, solving uh, different international uh, world problems, well, we are working uh, together on Iranian nuclear prob uh, problem in a very constructive manner, as well as uh, within the framework of the six-party talks on North Korea. We are working together on finding solution to the global uh, financial crisis and the meetings uh, of the G20 group in uh, Washington last year, in London, and this year in Pittsburgh <coughs> showed it. And by the way, on uh, the margins of all those meetings, uh, our presidents had their bilateral contacts. And one more thing, uh, Russia is quite more, uh, more open to the outside world than it was. Just take the number of Russians going overseas every year. And where do Russians go? The vast majority goes to the Western countries or to the close allies of the Western countries. Like, uh, for, for example, uh, last year, three million Russians went uh, to Turkey, a NATO ally. They go to Thailand, uh, which has privileged uh, security relations. And our main uh, trading partner and uh, business partner is Germany. So, when uh, judging where Russia stands now, take into consideration all those uh, facts and many more. And maybe one uh, more uh, thing. Uh, is uh, that what uh, the, that the, there are still many people in the West who consider Russians to be aggressive, who consider Russians to be a threat, and uh, it will always be that way. But I hope that as time goes by, the only people who consider Russians to be a threat will be the uh, goalkeepers of the NHL uh, teams. <laughs> because, uh, yes, ask uh, the goalkeeper from, uh, say, Chicago uh, Blackhawks, or uh, who is uh, threatening you most of all, and he will say, Ovechkin does, or Kovalchuk. <laughs> so that's uh, what I really think of, that uh, 
Russian threat will be associated just uh, with uh, Ovechkin and Kovalchuk, because it is so. No, but we are not threatening any other country, neither our neighbors, nor countries far from our, our borders.